Hello everyone, this is Ray Dadswell here once again with, well, the programme we call All About Eastbourne, but there are occasions that we travel a little bit further afield. And so it is my pleasure to welcome Bridget Pepper, Head of Volunteer Development for the Air Ambulance. So, Bridget, what is your role? Hello, Ray. Thank you. Yes. Well, my role is, as you rightly said, Head of Volunteer Development for Air Ambulance Charity Kent Surrey Sussex. And I look after a team of volunteers uh, that are instrumental in helping us basically to bring in enough money to keep our service funded. So we are a registered charity and not a lot of people realise that. And we have volunteers stretching across the region. And obviously we do have some in, in Eastbourne as well. So I look after the volunteers, recruit new ones, help them with their training so that they know what to do for us and basically keep them busy, really. That's very good. So do you actually yourself have a background in, how can we say, the air services in general? No, I don't. I have a background in, in charity work. So I started off as a fundraiser myself. Uh, and then went into the charity sector. And I've been with the Air Ambulance Kent, Surrey, Sussex for 13 years, almost 13 years now. So I've done most of the roles in the charity, in the back office side of it, in the fundraising side. And uh, I've done a lot of going out and about to events across the region as well, including your very famous Airborne in Eastbourne. Right. Yeah. So yes, yeah. I've done a bit of everything and now I'm looking after the volunteers. Great stuff. Well, that's one question I was going to come back to a little bit later on because it's all systems go apparently for Airborne uh, this year, so we understand it. But back to the, the organisation and three questions in one really. When, where, why was KSS set up in the first place? Okay, yes, that's a, it's an interesting answer, I think. Um, it was set up back in 1989 and a lady called Kate Chivers was instrumental in, in, in leading a team of people to set up the service in Kent. And Kate actually went down to the West Country and saw an air ambulance in operation and came back thinking, well, we need one of those in Kent for sure. So we started out as the Kent Air Ambulance and our first incident that we attended was 23rd of December 1989. Since then we've rapidly and steadily expanded and in 2007 we began to cover Surrey, East and West Sussex with a second helicopter. We don't of course just serve the people who live in those counties but we also serve of course those travelling through because in the southeast of England, of course, we've got loads of motorways and major roads. And yes. I think everybody realises they, you know, tend to uh, need our service. We do occasionally fly into neighbouring counties when they need extra help and they reciprocate for us as well. So as I say, we've grown and evolved over the years to become what we are now. And we have a, a very firm purpose and, and vision now. And um, our purpose is to save lives and to... Um, improve the quality of life for the people that we save and our vision is an end to preventable death through medical emergencies so we're very focused we're very driven and we really desperately want to help people and you know do that by achieving that, that vision. Well just a little comment a little story for your entertainment I suppose my brother a few years younger than me was clambering on the roof of his house some months ago and he fell off and damaged himself and the helicopter had to come and airlift him to Brighton General Hospital. Now whether that was the work of air ambulance or not I don't know but that's the sort of thing that you would do on a regular basis. Yes it, it is and where did where was his incident where, where was the fall? Yes certainly in Eastbourne yes. Yeah it would have been yes if, if he was um, flown by helicopter to Brighton that would have been us Ray for sure. Yeah, we get called out to, to lots of different things, actually. We get called out, obviously, to road traffic incidents, which I've mentioned, but also to medical emergencies. And those could be cardiac arrests, strokes, allergic, bad allergic reactions, asthma attacks, but also, as you just said there in that example, to accidents. So falls from a height is quite a common one. Also burns, accidents at work, industrial injuries, crushes, that kind of thing. And very sadly nowadays also to stabbings and self-harm incidents, which is, uh, you know, a sad sign of our times, but uh, we're there for whoever needs us really. Sure. I'm not certain that at that particular occasion when 
my brother came to grief that his wife was very happy about it <laughs> and that she had to trail along and see him in the hospital later but oh he and I are very different but that's not the story it's all to do with their ambulance today could, could I just ask is he doing okay now oh yes yes this was quite a oh, few good. months ago yes good oh good I'm not sensible good for you we do try to dissuade people from uh, doing dangerous DIY on their own please do get an expert in Absolutely. The worst thing that's happened to me, I suppose, that I fell off my motorbike. We, we lived abroad for a lot of years and I was very happy traveling around on a Honda 90cc machine. And yes, I came a crop on one occasion, but I was able yeah. to pick myself up and keep going. But I, I don't know how much you can give me by way of facts and figures. The, the number of helicopters, the crews, yeah. the staff that yes, you have sure. on your patch. Yes, definitely. Yes, I'd love to. We've got um, two main helicopters. Those are AW169s or Augusta Westland 169s, and they are state of the art helicopters, air ambulance helicopters. So they afford lots of space inside. We can work on the patient, around the patient, all the way around in transit if necessary. We've also got an MD902 Explorer. That's a McDonnell Douglas. I'll say it right in a minute, McDonald Douglas aircraft. And we use that as a backup in case one of the others is in service or needs a repair. And in addition to that, we've also got a fleet of four rapid response vehicles, cars, basically. So the doctor and paramedic, which is the minimum medical crew that you will always have attending you if, if we have to come out to you. So they can still get out in the cars if the helicopters can't fly. And that's often because of low cloud something like that and sometimes it's actually more appropriate to attend in the car anyway so it's an expert very highly skilled team that attend our patients and we operate 24 hours a day seven days a week so it's a, a full-on service well as a sideline I do some work with the local Eastbourne RAF air cadets Oh, brilliant. And we have a visit from one of your volunteers on Monday of next week. So yeah. although some of the information you've given me goes a little bit over my head, but it shouldn't with the cadets. So we're looking forward to that. And I had wondered whether we might have a helicopter come and land on our compound, if you like, on the parade ground. But that would cost us quite a lot of money, I think. And also would... there are electricity cables right across the middle. So yeah. that wouldn't work very easily. It, it wouldn't, no. And in fact, um, it, it wouldn't cost you a lot of money. It would cost you a lot of pain because the uh, we would need, you know, we'd be attending you for an incident if we were to land. Obviously, our aircraft need to be ready to respond very quickly whenever they're needed. So we do have to be most cautious about where the helicopters are. And they're generally they're based uh, at our base in Red Hill. Uh, which is pretty central to the southeast and we could get to most parts of the region within an absolute maximum of 20 minutes and, and often obviously much quicker than that so yeah that's where they sit and wait we have a second base at red hill that tends to be the charity offices although the helicopters sometimes are operational from there so you've talked about how much it costs to run the service could you give a rough idea monthly yeah. annually uh, annually, I can tell you it's about uh, 15.2 million a year to keep us doing what we do. And 86% of that is raised by uh, the people that very kindly support us. And uh, this is where basically this is where our volunteers come into play very much in, in helping us raise that money. So what sort of things do the volunteers do? They do a wealth of things, Ray. It's, it's really interesting, actually. And uh, we've got a lot of volunteers that have been with us for many more years than I've been with the charity uh, because they love it. So they do things uh, ranging from standing outside a store with the collecting box. A, a tent, and you've mentioned the air cadet. So a lot of our volunteers are speakers. So we give them full training and a really brilliant, really interesting presentation that they deliver to groups. If any groups or representatives of groups are watching this that would like a talk, then, you know, they're very welcome to get in touch with us. We can send a speaker. Volunteers also, one of the key roles they do is looking after our static collection boxes. Uh, so this is in shops, pubs, restaurants. And we're pretty short of them at the moment, actually. I don't believe we've got any in Eastbourne, indeed. So it would be lovely to get someone from there if we could. And those volunteers go and empty the static boxes, bank the money and 
help us bring in lots of well-needed fun. The volunteers also go to a variety of events such as shows and in the past obviously Airborne hasn't been happening in recent years but in previous years we've been to Airborne and had information stands and, and collected money there. And we're just about to launch, we're really excited about it actually, again because of Covid we haven't been able to do our annual car raffle and that's um, where we go around to major events or to garden centres in the summer and raffle a car and we're very short of volunteers to help us do that so it's you know I'm, I'm hopping on here to, to put in a bit of a plea if anyone would love to, oh, yes, to help us um, you know we're always in need of help I'm trying to think what else our so volunteers also go to check presentations for us so the groups that have kindly raised money they go along and do a bit of PR and pose for a photo lots of different different roles we've got for our volunteers and we're also very willing to listen to volunteers that have got some skills that they think may be of use but uh, you know we haven't necessarily got a role for it could be that we need to think outside the box a bit and uh, see how those people could help us so um, we just love our volunteers they're, it's they're all part of what we call the KSS family which is comprised of the operational crew charity staff and the volunteers and we're all equally important in saving lives and, and the volunteers are very much at the cutting edge of of you know getting those funds in and and it's lovely when again pre-covid when we could have volunteer meetings which we often do they come to red hill and they meet the crew and the crew are always so grateful to the volunteers for everything they do to allow them to do their jobs really great stuff well i mentioned the air cadets i mentioned them again of course we had a yeah. visit from representatives of the lifeboat RNLI in, in Eastbourne just a week or so ago and one of our young officers uh, he was chat I overheard the conversation and it sounds as if he might be volunteering he's only 16 now but yeah. I would imagine that age not people of retirement years uh, that anybody could do something absolutely right you, you, that's an important point i think because um, we are we're looking for bringing in you know young volunteers as, as you said so rightly the people that are retired have have generally more time but we do have a lot of volunteers that are younger we've, um, we've got actually a young ambassadors scheme where we've got some youngsters that are helping to go out and spread the word about the charity and we have young volunteers such as the, the the one that you just mentioned you know about 16 17 years old and it's lovely it's just lovely to get the youngsters involved it's a, a great thing and you never know where it's going to lead but there's one of the uh, young women in our squadron and she's wanting to do and she talked to me the other evening about this volunteering and i had a few ideas and so i'll say well yes listen carefully next monday evening when uh, we have a, a speaker along and just yeah. see how it goes from there. Well, Bridget, our time is fast approaching a uh, close. Thanks ever so much for all the details that you've given about KSS. And what we need to know is how people could get in touch with you or the organization directly. Lovely, thank you, Ray. I'd just like to say thanks ever so much for inviting Definitely. me on here because I, it's wonderful to get the news out in the Eastbourne area. Yes, if anyone wants to know more about anything, really, you can go to our website, which is www.aaks.org.uk, or you can um, email me directly about anything, really. I can pass it on to the appropriate person if it's not volunteering, but the email address is again quite simple it's volunteering at aaks.org.uk very good that's that's actually now i just need to let our listeners know how they can hear more thank you everybody for listening to our podcast my name is ray dadswell this has been eastbourne dot online thanks to my team chris dabs and the podcast studio for putting this podcast together don't forget you can subscribe, listen again, or catch up with any of my previous interviews online on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on your Alexa, or wherever you get your podcasts from. So thanks again, and see you soon.